today the briefing pertains to a cabinet decision of yesterday where uh, the cabinet has approved for the issue of Government of India guarantee up to 30,600 crores for the security receipts which will be issued. by the NARCL, which is the National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited. You are aware that in the budget of 21-22, I had announced the intention of setting up an asset reconstruction company with also an asset management company so that we can consolidate and take over the exits, existing stressed assets, the debts, and thereafter manage and dispose of them uh, to buyers so that we can realize the value of these stressed assets. If I can just go to a slightly uh, detail of the background. You remember that in 2015, asset quality review had happened of the banks. That was essentially for cleaning up and fully provisioning bank balance sheets, which revealed very high incidence of non-performing assets. Everybody is aware of the story. The government came up with a strategy of four R's, recognizing the NPA, which is the recognition of the problem, and then resolution, recapitalization, and then finally reforms. That year, after the recognition, The quantification of NPAs had started in a very uh, planned manner. And the recovery from the NPAs have also begun from there. And that's a routine process. But after the asset quality review, whatever had been recognized, the recoveries had to happen. So in the last six financial years, as a background, I want to put this because the four R's were really executed with such meticulousness that the recognition happened, resolution took place, and in some cases it took place, many other cases it did not. And then we kept recapitalizing the banks, as is the third R, and the fourth R was reforms. So, in the last six financial years, banks have recovered 5,1479 crores in the last six years. I'm just reading the numbers, 501479 crores. Of this, you want me to repeat that number again? Five zero. 1,479 crores. Of this, 3.1 lakh crores have been recovered since March 2018. Since March 2018, 3.1 lakh crores have been recovered. The total I read out was 5 lakh odd. In 18-19 alone, a record of 1.2 lakh crores were recovered. Recoveries included even those which were recovered from so-called written off. You have this written off, which every now and then becomes a debatable point for people who don't understand writing off in the banking parlance. So 5,1479 in total recovery crores in the last six financial 
years. 3.1 lakh crore were recovered since March 2018. 1.2 lakh alone, 1.2 lakh crores alone was recovered in a single year, which is 2018-19. And I also want to highlight, this includes 99,996 crores, which were recovered only from written off assets such as Bhushan Steel, SR Steel, and so on. So the Asset Quality Review 2015, then go on to talking about the four Rs, and then also looking at recovering from NPAs. All this has been happening. So keeping in line with the four Rs, recognition, resolution, even as they are happening, recapitalization. I just want to draw your attention that in 2017-18, government infused 90,000 crores. And in 18-19, 1 lakh 6, 1.06 lakh crores. So 17-18, 90,000 crores. 18-19, 1.06 lakh crores. 1920, 70,000 crores. 2021, 20,000 crores. And in the budget speech of 21 22, which is the latest, we had said that the government will infuse 20,000 crores to the banking sector in this financial year, 21 22. So, of the four hours, recognition, resolution, even as they were happening, recapitalization has also happened. Reforms. I will not get into the details, but I'll just flag off. Bank mergers, managerial reforms, bringing cooperative banks under the RBI, several supervisory action framework for primary cooperative banks, and so on. Since 2014, creating the Bank Board Bureau, strengthening asset reconstruction companies which existed, creating also a framework for key performance indicators for the banks, and strengthening of risk management practices. So reforms, I can go further to say Willful defaulters were not sanctioned at additional benefits for the bank's sake. Willful defaulters have also been barred, debarred from accessing capital markets to raise funds. These are all reforms which were carried out in order that the banking sector improves. The jurisdiction of the debt recovery tribunal was increased from 10 lakh to 20 lakhs so that the DRTs can focus on high-value cases. Six new DRTs have been established so that recovery can be fast. So if uh, under the reforms, the capitalization, bank ma mergers, managerial reforms, fraud detection, in that I'll just highlight the large frauds, frauds are detected as a continuous process. But the large frauds, say of 100 crores or more, have an average lag time of about 57 months. That's the average, I mean. So big frauds which have happened 57 months earlier were all getting detected. As a result, some people would say, how is it that there are more NPAs now? NPAs are not born overnight. Particularly NPAs resulting out of 100 crores or more do have their lag time. And finally, I did say for the fourth R, reforms as bank man uh, mergers, managerial reforms, fraud detection, 
fraud prevention steps were also taken quite a lot with the RBI on course. The Fugitive Economic Offenders Act of 2018 is showing a lot of result in getting people from outside. And the last highlight before I get to the subject of the cabinet clearance is because we kept very closely looking at the managerial and also professionalism in the banks, banks in 2018, just two of the 21 public sector banks were profitable. In 2018, just two out of 21 public sector banks were profitable. I'm happy to say 2021, 2021, meaning 2020, 2021, only two reported loss for the full year, that is. Incidentally, banks have also been raising monies in the public, equity and debt. Because as we go with the four hours, banks are today able to come out of the prompt corrective action. They are also making profit. They are also going over to making, uh, raising money from the markets. I'll just give you a couple of examples so that I can tell you why I had to tell you this uh, story from 2015. Union Bank of India raised 1,447 crores through QIP in July 2021. Canra Bank has raised 2,500 crores in August 2021. St Bank of India has announced a QIP for about 3,000 crores. State Bank of India said that its board has approved raising capital by way of issuance of Basel III compliant debt of about 14,000 crores. So a total of 58,697 crores are raised by the public sector banks, both as debt and equity, and of which 10,543 crores are equity alone. So banks are not waiting for the government to infuse equity. They are going to the market and on their own standing raising equity and also debt. So today, in the first five months of this year alone, 7,800 crores have been raised as, ag as against 10,500 and odd in the last year. So if I started with 2015 asset quality review, recognition, resolution, recapitalization and reform, today we see that the banks have come out. We, the only thing which, as was promised in the union budget of 21-22, is to set up the National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited so that those assets which are sitting in the balance sheet of banks, which are NPAs, for which provisioning has been done, full provisioning has been done over the last few years, there will now be an asset reconstruction company which will aggregate all this, collect it and take it over, make sure that the managing and disposing of it is done professionally and which will therefore result in banks' balance sheets and books being cleaner transparent, they will now be able to stand on their own and do their business. We have proved it because banks are going out and raising resources. So the setting up of the National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited has this as the background. With this, I think between 2014 and 19 and 19 to today, the entire cycle of cleaning up the public sector banks, removing from them those assets which are NPAs, putting them into an organizational structure which is registered as a company. Aggregation can be made and they, they can get into that organization. And then an asset management company would deal with reorganization, revaluation, and making sure 
that they are finally uh, sold off. And for the professional management of this, even as we are setting up the National Assets Reconstruction Company Limited, we are also setting up an India Debt Resolution Company Limited. In the National Asset Reconstruction Company, banks, the public sector banks themselves will have a 51% ownership. And in the India Debt Resolution Company, public sector banks and public financial institutions will hold a maximum of 49% stake and then the private sector lenders will also be participating in it. So what this does is actually give us a complete picture of the Indian banking sector reform, cleaning up of the books, taking away the NPAs, and getting the banks their dues in the due course. And why do I say in the due course? Even as these are being culled out of the bank's books and put into the National Asset Reconstruction Company, a 15% cash payment will be made to the banks for the assets based on some valuation, and the rest will be 85% be given as security receipts. For the security receipts to hold on and to have their value intact, there is a need for government to give the backstop arrangement. And that is why this 30,600 crores has been cleared by the cabinet yesterday. There are several private sector uh, asset reconstruction companies, about 28 of them in the private sector, all of which are doing some kind of resolution, but they do not take up big ticket uh, asset uh, resolutions. They hesitate to come in for that kind of a number. Therefore, there's a need for government-backed security receipts to be given. And once the asset is finally managed, valuated better, and then when it is sold through um, uh, you know, asset management companies, the rest 85% will be given to the banks, which are held as security receipts for some time. The secu security receipts are getting the back, backstop through the government's funding only in as much as to be able to pay the gap between the realized value and the face value of the security receipts. And this will hold good only for five years. And in order that there are no delays in the process, the rate of you know, the payment, they will have to pay a fees, even that will go on increasing. So there is an incentivizing for speedy disposal of these assets, more as an ongoing concern than as a liquidation. Of course, there'll be coordination with IBC and all other debt recovery processes as well. I've given you a broad picture. I've also given you a background. This, I'm happy to say, is a short and a medium term way in which the banking sector in India has been uh, in, in totality, we have addressed the issues facing the banking sector, which was in 2015, staring at our economy, saying, how are these banks going to recover? Because the double balance sheet problem, the twin balance sheet problem, which caused a lot of stress, today I feel has a way in which this stress can be resolved. And I'm glad that the cabinet has looked at it in a holistic fashion, and given this, 30,600 crores for a period of five years only. And within that five years, all this will have to be resolved. This is my opening statement. Of course, Secretary Banking is here. He'll also join me in addressing any of your queries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We'll take some questions now. 22. Um. 
sorry for the delay. Uh, good evening, Ma'am. Sapna here from CNBC. Uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, Ma'am, just wanted to ask two quick questions. Why is the government la guarantee limited to five years? And also, if some clarity can be given, Ma'am, that out of the guarantee that you're giving on the SRs, what will be the percentage of the government, uh, you know, um, in the sense uh, of the SR, how much will the government guarantee? I'll certainly ask uh, Devishish to respond, but it's not percentage. It is the difference between the face value and the realized value, which is what is going to be paid. And why is it five years? Within five years, we expect to clear it. Uh, and the sooner they do it, they're better placed because of the uh, charges which they otherwise will have to be anyway. That is a built-in mechanism. Uh, Devishish, you want to expand on answered it? it. Uh, the whole idea is to ensure that these assets for which this whole uh, setup is being created and the value which is lying locked in these assets are realized by the bank, it comes back to the bank, they use it as a growth capital and the banking system becomes more robust. So it is a natural way of an incentive or disincentive you may say that beyond five years if they delay the process then they can no longer invoke the guarantee, it gets extinguished. So, uh, so this is the whole idea behind it and what ma'am said, the difference between the face value and the actual realization is what is being guaranteed. But in, in all probabilities, these assets may have an upside and by guaranteeing and giving this backstop, the entire upside will also come back to the banks rather than getting retained by the NARCL. The backstop gives a certain credibility for these NPAs which have been sitting in the banks, for which the banks had been repeatedly provisioning, whereas once you take them out, manage them, reevaluate them, and then when you give them out for people to buy it, they certainly have a better prospect of getting a higher value. And that is why this route has been adopted. Number 10. Ma'am, this is Ruchi Bhatia from ET now. Uh, the uh, IBA has applied to the central bank, the RBI, for uh, uh, the license as well. How soon can we expect that licensing to come in and how soon will the NARCL be operationalized? In, in, if you can help us with the timelines. The, N the NAR NARCL has al al already been uh, uh, incorporated as a company and the name National has also been given by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs because there is more than 51% holding of the public sector banks. Uh, the license is in the process of uh, being issued by the RBI and in the meantime the cabinet approval has also come. The assets which are to move to the, uh, 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 the NARCL as an, in an aggregated form and get warehoused there in the initial phase has already been identified by the lenders. The uh, valuation uh, also the NARCL has done based on which uh, this uh, guarantee is also being invoked where there's an 18% weighted average that has been accorded to this whole thing. Uh, projects worth about 2 lakh crores, toxic assets have been identified in the first phase. Those which are completely provis provisioned uh, about worth about 90,000 crores, uh, crores are going to move to the NARCL. However, let me add this entire thing, the structure, the formulation, the working together with the banks, that the government is not putting in any money to form these companies, have all been completely uh, undertaken with a lot of consultation with the RBI. So for giving the uh, permission, it shouldn't take much of a time. It should happen sooner rather than later. Number nine. Ma'am, if I could just ask you a bit on the reform aspect that you uh, spoke. Uh, another key reform which you had sort of announced in your uh, budget speech was on the privatization of two public sector banks. So how soon can we see any movement on that? Uh, the moment I'm ready to talk more on it, I will talk. But work is happening at a good pace. You see this has also happened very quickly. However complicated this would be, it has been sorted out and the formulation has been uh, appreciated because there are quite a few uh, asset management companies out there, but when government together with the public sector banks are coming up, it brings in a different dimension because it can now deal with uh, big ticket uh, NPAs. 
Number 50. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Nikun from Business Standard. Uh, ma'am, this guarantee that the government is providing 30,600 crore, this would be utilized for what quantum of bad loans? Will it be 2 lakh crore, the entire uh, 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 that the secretary said has been identified, or the entire provisioning for which have been done, which is 90,000 crore? 2 lakh crores is what we are saying is the value of that uh, uh, NPA, which is totally being carved out of which secretary very clearly said about 90,000 is in the first phase. Once they are parked or warehoused and then the valuation and everything else happens and when they are sold off, it is the gap which arises from the face value and the realized value for which this backstop comes in. For all you know, in many cases, they need not even invoke it. So it is, it is not something you would have, uh, I'm sure if I can digress for a minute, you would have seen how we worked out on the emergency credit guarantee liquidity support, many of which may not even invoke the guarantee that we've given. Similarly here, whilst the guarantee helps in keeping the face value intact and also give the credibility to the entire exercise so the valuation will be better when it is realized. Actually, when it is sold off, for all you know, the cap may not be there at all or it might be very small. So it need not be invoked in every instance. And that 2 lakh crores, uh, the entire guarantee is for the 2 lakh crores. Number 25. Uh, Mm. Uh, Secretary, sir, my question is to you. Uh, as uh, you have said that uh, some 90,000 crore has been uh, identified, so uh, I want to know what is the amount of investment banks together uh, need to put in in this company uh, for getting that 90,000 crores? So they, they initially will put to the extent of 15% which is the cash deal. That is their equity uh, in the NARCL and it is being contributed by about 16 banks which include public sector banks as well as private sector banks and also some non-banking financial companies. So that will be the amount, it is close to five to 6,000 crores, that's all, which money will actually come back to the banking system again by way of the all cash, I mean the cash deal of 15%. So it is around 6,000 crores, sir? Yes. Okay, 107. ये केवल गारंटी तब इन्वोक होगा जब वो रेजोल्यूशन हो जाए या उसकी लिक्विडेशन हो अन्य दशा में उसमें उनको बैंक को कुछ नहीं मिलेगा इसलिए बैंक और जो दो कंपनी सेटअप कर रहे हैं उनकी अपने वो होना चाहिए कि भाई इसको हम रिजॉल्व करें या लिक्विडेट करें जिससे कि हमें ये गारंटी का अगर आवश्यकता पड़े इन्वोक हो सके इधर रिजॉल्व और लिक्विडेट अदरवाइज यू कैनॉट इन्वोक दिस गारंटी One more thing. 58. Uh, sir, you said that uh, this National Asset Reconstruction Company, it has already been incorporated. What about the other company, debt resolution? And whether it will have Indian name with it because there will not be a majority of the government. The debt uh, reconstruction uh, resolution company has also been incorporated and they have got this name uh, as per their uh, rules and regulations. So this company is also in place now. The same number of banks again will be part of this uh, uh, IDRCL. Question first, number 44, we'll take that then come back to you. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, this question is for the secretary. Uh, sir, uh, while it is, it is the banks which will have a stake in the NARCL, however, there still could be a situation where there is a difference of opinion between banks and NARCL regarding the valuation of a certain assets. 
right? Banks would obviously want a higher price for the assets that they're transferring. So is there a mechanism where these, these issues can be sorted out? See, the NARCL, the primary purpose is to aggregate the assets. So we have all joined to form a company because we want these assets, which are toxic assets, lying for a long period of time, unresolved, values locked into it, or the value is getting eroding. Uh, so we want this money back. So we have all agreed in the first place. So therefore, there is no question of a difference of opinion. It goes in an aggregated form. So instead of talking to now 15 or 16 or 17 people, I am talking just to the NARCL. And then as ma'am explained, when it goes to the management company, debt management company, they are a professional set up there. They understand the market and they know how to run that company. So they will preserve the value or enhance the value and dispose it off as and when they get a suitor, an AIF, alternate investment fund or a potential buyer. One thing should be understood that this total of aggregated assets which is going into the asset management, the National Asset Reconstruction Company, is going to be managed by the professionals in the India debt resolution. And these assets are not one type of assets. They are all assets belonging to different types. So each type to be handled for a uh, liquidation or for resolution need different specialists. So this India debt resolution uh, company is going to have to uh, draw, the, draw on the services of so many different professionals. Professionals belonging to various verticals will all be coming in to help out and advise and take the benefit out of their advice. So the assets are all not similar in nature. The NPA uh, lifespan is also of not similar nature. Some are very old, some are new. So for handling this, the professional should be given the fullest play and for which the India Debt Resolution Company will have it because that's the one which has to manage and also uh, bring in the valuation for it. 176, we'll take this last question. Mike Tediji. So you mentioned 2 lakh odd crore is what is going to be transferred to the national ARC, out of which 90,000 crores is the fully provisioned uh, part that we are talking about? 90,000 crores is the first phase. Okay. The entire, the entire thing is, is fully provisioned. For Got the it. 2 lakh is the amount 30,000, 600 odd for the cabinet decision. Phase 1 deals with 90,000. And, and has the process of this transfer already started or it will start now? I mean, is there a timeline by when you will do the transfers? I mean, is there a calendar for that? No, they, they, we have already asked them to prepare a calendar. It is under preparation. And uh, there will be, as ma'am said, a professional board also to uh, oversee the affairs. And from the government also, it will be uh, sort of, there will be an oversight mechanism. And uh, for each of these assets, they will draw timelines. And now it is actually the banks who are more interested and raring to go because they want their money back. So we have only given a backstop support to, the, to them, but we will extend all uh, help and support to them to make sure that they are resolved on time and so that the money comes back to the system and banks become more robust. So when you say oversight, yeah, once. When you say oversight what is it oversight mean by the government? When you say oversight, uh, because it will be purely professional, you are giving a government guarantee, Correct. but will it be at the finance minister level or secretary level no, that no. you will review the it? oversight it? means here that we will be talking to them how they are proceeding, is there any difficulty, so if they need any support from the government, it will be there. Otherwise, it will be purely professional kind of setup which we will be dealing. We don't have the expertise there. It's the expertise In fact, lies that there. is one of the things I need to highlight. The banks will get the money is one thing. When the uh, ultimate sale happens, the rest 85% equivalent also they will be getting. But more importantly, one of the reasons why these NPAs have been there every year provisioning being made is because banks personnel don't even have adequate specialization in dealing with NPA disposal, valuation, management, and disposing them, realizing the money, realizing the value, and then coming back to the bank to, to pay. Banks professionals, however good they are in their professionalism about banking-related matters, cannot deal with asset reconstruction. And therefore, many of the banks have been sitting wondering how to get dis uh, uh, how to dispose these assets. So the banks themselves will feel that it is no more their headache 
to have to deal, find the best buyer, uh, negotiate with them, and so on. That job is now going off to professionals. So the bank staff will now be free to do their basic, original, core competent jobs. आया है कैस के ऊपर या चर्चा होगी आज हम कैबिनेट डिसीजन के ऊपर बात कर रहे हैं ओके लास्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी मैम डिपांकर फ्रॉम पीटीआई जस्ट अ स्मॉल क्लारिफिकेशन फॉर दिस थर्टी थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड क्रोर गारंटी दैट गवर्नमेंट इज गिविंग विल देर बी एनी फिजिकल आउटगो एंड द सेकंड थिंग यू आर चार्जिंग the guarantee fee will be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, progressively it will increase every year. So that is also an incentive that early resolution, the guarantee fee remains at a particular level. Now 30,600, there is no, there, that is a contingent liability on the government, so we immediately, we don't foresee any fiscal uh, uh, requirement at this point of time. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And. Uh, an FAQ on this matter will be put in the website. It, I'm sure you've got the link. So that might help you. In case you have any more questions, you're welcome to contact uh, over email or something. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, friends. We close. Subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel.